Hello, it's your creepy brony roommate Midnight, and today I'm happy to announce the start of the next major HHL tournament, Lodge Wars. I'll quickly explain how this works. So, as the name suggests, uh, you participate as your Lodge. Um, conglomerates of Lodges are also welcome if you don't have enough members who want to participate. So basically you have to uh, have a team of at least 9 people, or up to a total of 20 people, like the maximum amount of people who can be in the Lodge. And how this works is we got a group stage again. We are 18 lodges and we are divided into two groups of four and two groups of five people. And like in the World Cup, the matches in the group stage will all be played, so everyone against everyone, and the best two lodges will go forward into the playoffs. To be eligible for rewards, your lodge has to participate with at least nine members. So all nine members have to play. You can't just play like oh, these three people are the best of my lodge and they play and everyone gets the rewards. Now that doesn't work like that. And also, if a player plays round 1, like me now, he is not able to play round 2, so you always have to pass the next round. This way you basically can play the whole tournament of 6 people and let 3 other people play the finals theoretically. So yeah, I hope this makes sense. We are playing as groups of 3, I mean the large versus large thing. 3 people are announced and they play against the 3 other people who are announced from the other large. Okay, that sounded weird. Anyway, I hope that <laughs> made sense. I'm really terrible at explaining such things. You can read the Lodge Wars rules in the Discord in case. Uh, I, uh, <laughs> my babbling made no sense. Anyway, and we're playing a best of three match. We have to declare two warlords. It's not like in the World Cup, they are not fixed for the entire tournament. They are only fixed for this round and we have to play a best of three match and win with both warlords. For this match, we are playing against the Unremembered Empire. I I'm playing for Traders Ed. Uh, yeah, this is my Lodge, you know it by now probably. Uh, we are backed up by Orion, but we are almost pure Traitor Sand. And we're playing against the, as mentioned, Unremembered Empire. I think this is a conglomerate of four lodges, the Brotherhood, uh, 500 Worlds, Thunder Warriors, and Iron Hands, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm playing against Commissar Wachewski. So how do you pick Wallace for that? It's pretty random. I just wanted to have something solid. So today I'm playing Vulcan as my first Warlord. Um, he's just super beefy, punishes aggro with that, uh, very versatile, has room for attack, and got buffed recently, so really good warlord, helped me in my last weekly a lot, and also carry a cast run. Mm, the sisters are also quite versatile, I like them. Uh, she puts a more aggressive playstyle, she's great at control, and I thought she has room for a knock tech to compete in tournaments. And my opponent, Kombis Obachevsky, brings Luther, also a recently buffed warlord. Interesting to see him. I don't think he's that good in the competitive scene because he's easily attacked against if you know that you're playing against him. But nonetheless, he might punish slow decks like Vulcan. And then good old Horus, very flexible warlord, can rush you down a couple turns, can play troops, can play tactics. Always seen a lot in tournaments because of his consistency, versatility, and just being overall a very solid warlord. Alright, I'll DM my opponent that I'm ready. I hope he replies, and then I'll see you in game one. Ah, very good. He started with Luther. Pretty happy about it. Um, I'm keeping Pale Scourge. Kept that especially for that matchup. And probably will mulligan the rest. Is... Going second sucks a bit. Hopefully he doesn't have a turn one. Oh, what's it called? We are wardens and warriors. Mm. We are the sons of Caliber. Okay, he doesn't. Very good. I forgot the name of the card. And he also face bashes. Interesting. And uh, the name of the card? The one which summons two Jaegers for two energy, I forgot it. Local Uprising, here we go. I'll just summon this. As you see, I attacked a lot of AoE here. And he attacks that, uh, that's okay. I can't do anything with his troops, so... I'm just gonna go with the Prosecutor Mistress here. Attack. We really need to keep, keep his board clean, and I'm actually gonna go face. I really want to seal the game before he can transform. Not that happy about my hand, to be honest. But, uh. Should work. So, what do we do? What do we do? I'm just gonna get this counter attack. I'm gonna summon White Falcons. <clears throat> they won't get sneak attack anyway. So, as mentioned, keeping his board clean. Pretty important in my opinion, and go aggressive. Huh. 
Okay. Time is short. Dead turn. Interesting. Um, I'm just gonna play the Night Centura and as mentioned, I'm gonna go aggressive. Did he derp? I don't know what he he moded, but nothing happened. Good for security misses into Pale Scourge. So uh that's unfortunate. Oh, this is fine. So let's see. Um hmm. I could waste my AoE again. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna draw a card here. Oh, and the last rival section is perfect. I also got the call for any bigger board, so I should be fine. Nebula is a tech card for Horus. And here's Euphemia King, so... White Falcons. Sneaky smack. Um... I'm gonna summon another sister here, I think. Instead of the Axiarch. Right here. And give him a smack. Euphemia King will be pretty useless here. It's also against Taurus. Here's Caliban's heart. Uh, good news is this is gonna get wiped entirely by a one energy card. <laughs> so I'm probably gonna go with Pale Scourge here. Oh, look at that. Test Drag. Axiarch. Pale Scourge. Oh, holy moly. I just hope he... Okay, even if he has unresistible charisma, it shouldn't do anything. Like, okay, I will take 10 damage, but... Oh, that was a turn. That's what I meant in the intro, that's Luther. Yeah, he has charisma. Local uprising. And it didn't help. Alright, round one goes to me. And that's what I meant with uh, Luther kind of being uh, a bit awkward of a pick because... <laughs> I mean, I countered his whole gimmick with a one energy card which costs eight energy. So yeah, pretty good matchup for me nonetheless. Um, Let's hopefully jump into the second one. Alright, here we go. Fight two. Um, I have to play Vulcan, obviously. And this is looking pretty good. I'm going first. We are the sons of Missing my AoE, unfortunately. I hope it's also not very welcome. He plays Melkiel. And that's pretty strong. For turn one. Here's my AoE. Pretty good. And let's get... Should I get Fire Drakes or Last Rifle? I'm gonna get Last Rifle. And next turn I can play it alongside with Xavier and it will be pretty good. So what's that? Yeah, that dude. So not gonna go with Xavier path. I want to clear that because it will just keep generating troops. So let's scorch this. And let's kill the knight. Oh, what happened? Kill the knight. Okay. And I'm also going aggressive here because I really don't want him to transform. Because against Vulcan, this is gonna be my death sentence. Alright. Okay, he traces Melkiel, interesting. Okay, okay, here are depth sets. I'm not gonna use them yet, I'm gonna play Naked Reston. And keep face bashing. I want to put him most tough on the board before I depth sets. I think I'll be greedy here. Alright. 
Good stuff, I like it. So, I'm still gonna be greedy here. I also have Scorched Earth, so I'm gonna play the deck clear. And pass the turn. I really want to bait him, bait his bot a bit more. I mean, he can summon a dude and then strategic mastery, this might be pretty bad. But I think this combo here should still do it. Okay, he kills uh, He kills the student instead. Yeah, he doesn't trade his health. And that's fine. And he face bashes too. Okay. Alexis Nebula will be useless here. Um I still don't want a death set, so let's play Hope. Into Doombringer. I like that. Uh, let's play Xavier naked, I guess. And let's use that. It's just a distraction here. Not much more. Mm, that's Aetius. And put Chaplain Xavier. Alright, faces the place. I'm fine with that. So, what do we do here? It's probably time for a death set. Don't really want to use um, Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth will be used against. Um, although I have Doombringers, so yeah, it doesn't matter that much, I think. Alright, more stuff coming to play. Unfortunately, I don't have um, a devotion. How good is that? Pretty good, actually. So let's play the Doombringer. Oh, uh, yeah, let's play Devotion. Doombringer. Take the Jew back. I'm a bit low on health, to be honest. This gives him a good trade. But, yeah, I gotta do this, do something here. Pretty bad draw, to be honest. Let's get the wrong card back. Oh, I forgot what to do that. Holy shit, it's too dark. How long have I been recording like that? Now you see my face much better. Anyway, we will see. Okay. Ooh, that's nasty. And he trades this instead of ATS. Interesting. I personally wouldn't have done that. But, I mean, why the hell not? Because now I can't just do that. I can transform. And I can benevolence. The Netherlands would have probably been used better on that, but I got st Scorched Earth to trigger his, uh, his sacrifice, so I think it's still worth. Here's another Melgator, fine. Ouches. Okay. Let's play Hope into. What can I play alongside with Rest and just Roshan Squads? So let's do that. Let's generate a teaching. Devotion again, okay. Can play both, so just Rest then. And Roshan. Hopefully, you can kill me. Spirons, okay. Ooh, and transformation. No, betrayal, interesting. Nice, he got me there. Betrayal, pretty unusual card. Now, he's gonna have to win with Horus again. Or, he has to uh, win with Horus, and I have to win with uh, Vulcan. Mm, yeah, obviously mulliganing that. So comes the moment. History will be made here.
Yeah, this obviously Please has to go. Again. Hello. I am glad to meet you, Combat. Oh, Combat is very welcome. Against Horus. It's gonna face Pesci, obviously. <laughs> Deathstruck Squad. Okay. Don't see that much often. Um, I'm gonna go with the Savior of Fire Drakes. I can't play Xavier now anyway, so... Mm, let's go with Fire Drakes. Okay, let's kill it. And play the rest then. Ah, oh, yeah, that's that's unfortunate. Um, so I really need my Ashen Bones here. I'm gonna draw first, I think. So let's play Orbital Combat, so he can't do any wacky stuff. Um, and Ashen Bones, very good, here it is. Now, like, this has to go urgently. Can't even leave it at 2 HP, so yeah, bit of an overkill, but had to do it. Cable Squad, interesting. Okay, and yeah, nothing else. Okay. I'm not gonna play the fire drakes yet. I'm gonna hope for uh... let's get Xaver. Cheap Xaver might be cool. Play diversion and get rid of the K band. Form a network. Why does he have as an attack? Don't play any stealth. Arf. So I'm gonna play the expensive one here because I can't play anything else this turn anyway. Let's do it. If he outflanks it, it's actually fine. Yeah, here you go. That's the first outflank. Um. Okay, let's um, generate a teaching. Devotion again, nice. Uh, throw herbal comet now. Now let's play the Xaver and call it a day. I hope he doesn't have a second outflank here. A second wave? Holy crap, okay. Okay, okay. Interesting. So, let's death set here. I'm gonna do that. Death set. Killing everything pretty good. That roll was important. And play rest hand. Looking good so far. His deck is a bit weird. K-Tech? Uh, okay. Ah, uh, yeah, that, that's a card. <laughs> Holy crap. Um, I don't have Urticool in this deck. I have another Ash and Bones, but only one because I expected to play Burn. You really surprised me with that. I'll be honest here. So let's manifest. Fire Drakes. And go face here. If manifest, I kind of bring myself out of range of Vengeful Spirit. That's the idea here. Could have also tacked into that with Rest Hand, but. I think it's fine as it is right now. It still forces him to trade here. I also don't run resiliences in the stack, because I kind of played Zoo, or more or less Zoo. A lot of tiny troops because of Luther. 
so I can trade more efficiently. So he trades here, or attacks here, attacks here again. And oh, holy crap, I expected uh, another uh, Fellblade, to be honest. Okay. I don't like how it's looking so far at all, to be honest. So let's draw a card. Scorched Earth. What does Scorched Earth do? Not much. So let's generate the teaching. What's resilience? Perfect. Fire Drake. Um, let's do that. So trade here, obviously. I think that makes no sense yet, so I'm gonna enable here. So we can't outflank or do any flank or any funky uh any funky damage tactic thingies. I don't know. So he has to trade all his stuff basically, that's the idea. Alright. You got his face, okay. So, do I have some elaborate lethal here? I don't. So, gonna have to do that. Fortunately. Well, let's generate a teaching first, actually. Because I'm not. Go I'm gonna play the Doombringer here anyway, obviously. And another diversion, so let's do that. And Doombringer. Nice. Really good value here. <laughs> Honorable Sudoku. Oh yeah. Nice. So two one for us. GG to my friend Komis Wachewski. He uh, uh, played the solid Ruther, and his horrors, to be honest, catch me off guard completely. Holy crap! All right. Um, I got a bonus for you, the guys here, though. So we won our matches. I'm just gonna pin them here uh, for the record in case someone wants a proof of something. And I got the matches of Spiral for you as well. Spiral played this round as well. Uh, you might know him if you're checking the ladder from time to time. He's like always in the top 10. He made Warmaster twice. He's also playing this round. And we're gonna watch his games as well. Alright, Spiral shares his matches. I didn't see them yet. I know the outcome. But uh, yeah, he is, can't be with me because apparently he's only playing on his phone and he can't look at Discord and voice chat at the same time. And he played uh, Lucretia, which is also kind of weird to pick, a bit like Luther, like she can overwhelm your opponent sure on how to win, but he's kind of, she's kind of inconsistent and easy card in my opinion. And Spiral's second warlord was Horus Lupercal as well. He played against Commander Gilliman, and that's the Lodge Master of the 500 worlds, would have guessed. And he was playing Genetia Crow, also a warlord I didn't see in tournaments that much. Uh, still a pretty strong pick and Cambodias. Both strong picks, just not seen very much in tournaments. I'm excited for those. As mentioned, I didn't see the game set, I only know the outcome. And let's jump into the first one. Alright, we're looking from Spiral's perspective. He's playing Lucretia against Kroll. Pretty bad matchup, but uh, he got a pretty good starting hand. Mulligan, one of the frauds here, obviously. Your army is nothing yeah, we're gonna see classic win. Lucretia hand vomit here. Kroll goes face. This is usual, I guess. So yeah, here we go. Here's the hand vomit. And he's a scout. Summons the counter attack for he's used to buff that, I guess. Exiarch. Infantry. <laughs> Just a casual five troops in one turn. Any face bashes too. All right, let's see. Oh, that was lucky, not gonna lie. Like, I don't know, I, I would have made it different. I would have face bashed first and then did that because this is the second best target in my opinion. Like, this is, would be the best, this is the second best. Yet, yeah, it was quite lucky. But yeah, anyway, let's see. Obviously, this here, here. You back. And obviously, killing those off so Bill can't um, trigger a battle honor. Giving her a nice smacks. And the gold for for damage. Well, sure, why not? Not holding them back. Going full aggro here. 
Ooh, look at that pull, Euphemia King. I think this is gonna be crucial. <coughs> Say, I ripped you back. You did a great job. You will be missed. This is gonna be huge. Alright, Kai's lane. It's being played. Let's see. Yeah, that's not a very good draw here. Lord Malkiel. Ghost stones. It doesn't trade with the gold stones. Will she use this to trade? Ah, oh, yeah, I see. Okay. Okay, interesting. Okay, here are the. What are they called? White Falcons, not White Knights. <laughs> no. What? Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, I forwarded to where I left off. Um, now he he traded Kai's lane into that. Okay, like White Falcons here, it's, it's, it's reasonable. But why would you trade Kai's lane? Like, does he want to save health? I mean, it's three damage, okay. <gasps> what? Okay, even if you didn't want to save health, why do you face bash? I don't get it. Kai's lane is such a valuable troop. I would have just kept it alive. I mean, I think this was a crucial mistake. Not gonna lie. This also, I mean, he doesn't know he has it, but this opens up for Euphemia King. This will be a seven damage attack from the king. He doesn't expect it, but fuck. Damn, boy. I mean, it would make kind of sense if he traded it off and just uh, kept, didn't do anything else. But he face bashed, so. He, hmm. Yeah, killing that makes no sense, okay. Alright, Joker Company. Interesting to see that. Take on the Melgator? Ah, I guess to... I guess it dies then, if... Uh, it attacks the... Exiarch. Pretty good, pretty good. So he trades everything here. And this probably also trades. Wouldn't risk it. Okay, here's Duke. Will he buff him or will he... Yeah, he will go face. I would probably also go face. I'm not sure. Like, my basic instinct would probably buff it, but going face is the right decision. Ooh, roll through twi uh, three twice. And Raven, uh, Raven's Claw off the top. Runs death sets and quill. Also interesting. Oh, and top deck lethal. Top deck lethal. Okay, quite a game. If he didn't trade that Kaiser lane, he would have won. I mean, Commander Gilliman. Like because of that, he lost because that opened up for Euphemia King. I know he didn't. Uh, he he didn't know uh, Spiral stole the Euphemia King, but um, even if you don't know that, I don't think this was the correct play. So it cost him the game, in my opinion. All right, let's jump into game two. So Spiral has to swap his Warlord. He's going with Horus, and he keeps his hand, even Vengeful Spirit. I mean, why not? It's a crucial card. This too. I would at least mulligan that, I guess. History but, will be made well, here. He usually just no uses your wall of power to one. Cabend. Pretty good tech card, it's Cambit Yes, I guess. I, re I really don't see these too much. Hmm. Okay, he doesn't use his counter attack. Interesting. Like, when Cambit Yes goes first, uh, second, I mean, you often see, like, Spawner Truth give it counter attack. I guess he was certain he can kill it anyway while well, Grogos or quick fires. He does that instead. Like, yeah, okay. This also dies. To Chariot, so on, but Sparrow has a better play, I think. Yeah, that's much better tempo here. With the uh, Mugator. Basically, saves 6 damage for something else. And makes this counter attack useless. Mm, that's a weird attack, to be honest. Or is it? Actually, quite smart. 
I just don't understand flanks which don't kill anything. Because you know if he killed that, he always would have had to, to trade here. And Malkiel, like Malkiel stays alive, he still does the same things now. He would do if he had 4 health. Hmm, I don't know. Okay, yeah, the perimeter defense is on Curve. Curve. I, th I think this was bad, like if we killed Melgator, it would have been a better outcome, I think. But Spiral has the perfect answer here, I see. Red Grenade. And uh, now he's getting punished for not killing the Melgator. He smacks. And he doesn't attack into it. Now he decides to draw a card instead and use Quickfire. Okay, the Quickfire is a bit wasted, but he uses energy to the fullest, so I guess it's worth it. Alright, turn uh, 5. Hopefully no workers will win here. Alright, very good. Modification must three so this is gonna be two pings. Takes the three again. Would have played it here and hope for the best, but I guess that's the safe play in terms of board control. Well, let's see. Second chariot being played. On the fortified outpost. Ooh, here's her got her ghost. A bit late though. And playing the Grover to clear the tutors from Fortification Mastery. Good stuff. So if he doesn't play anything too crazy here... Ooh, what is that? Cast Drag. And that's an interesting card for Cambodias. I don't know, because like he can't suicide his stuff. Like, it's good if you can suicide stuff, attack with stuff. I mean, yeah, you also have a full board, but what's the point of giving turrets attack? I don't know. Also, very good top deck here, last rifle, so we can play something besides outflanking something. That could turn the last rifle, not the best uh, target, but. Or tempo, I guess. But now he's free to play Mortature. Ghost is being played over Mortature, of course. And he actually clears the Mergator here. I'm surprised. Like, he's playing for really heavy bot control. He doesn't want to have him anything on the bot. Like, usually you should only worry about Twitch. Mergator is whatever. Maybe he's playing around Gunfried or something. Like, yeah, if. He it would have been a 10 energy with Melkiel, like spawn a turret, play Gunfried, I guess. Here's the Whirlwind. Coming late. Takes us Melkiel to save health. Good idea, to be honest. Good play. Oh, he gets in core marked, I think, at this point when this gets mark of corn and not like uh, Slow Nash. It's time to go face. Especially with this hand. Yeah, double death sets. You would know, probably just play death sets here. For the best. And that's high roll. Two. Yeah. Go face and trade here, I guess. He decides to draw. Interesting. So, unless he has another shield. Um, What's it called? The shield up card, just like gain best on three and draw a card. He's dead. And yeah, he, he turns up like this is a pretty impressive board. But keeping the Vengeful Spirit in again. the opening hand. <laughs> cocky. Uh, kind of paid off. I mean, he drew almost. He drew over two thirds of his deck, so it's very likely he would have drawn it anyway. But yeah. Alright. 2 0 for Spiral. Solid. That means we're winning round one. Our third member that still has to play, uh, but it doesn't really matter for this round how he plays. Uh, it's only matters if there will be tiebreakers. I don't know exactly how the tiebreakers are calculated, but if there will be any, it will matter if Zed wins or not. Okay, thanks for watching. These were uh, the games of round one of the Lodge Wars. I hope you enjoyed some competitive play again after the World Cup.
<laughs> Maybe you missed those games. They didn't have that much views, but uh, some people really wanted to see them because, yeah, I mean, I want to keep it a little bit closer. Some competitive plays, some letter, some fun with the community requests, some event, you know, that stuff. So, yeah, as mentioned, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you will tune in in the next video, coming up soon as usual. And I hope to see you then. Midnight out.